Hello friends, welcome to our Tech channel for another topic. Today we're going to present you a video about hydrogen and its role in the energy transition. Researchers have archived a major breakthrough in technologies that include hydrogen. But what will this change in everyday life? And why are these discoveries important? But before we answer that, we invite you to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. Let's get started. Hydrogen is one of the most common and abundant elements in the universe. It binds more easily to other elements. This is why it's an important energy carrier. Many fields are interested in this gas. It can be an important part of a fuel cell. It can help to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases. By putting it in a fuel cell, the reaction produces only water. But why is this technology not widespread in the world? The main reason is that it has to be extracted from other elements. There are currently two methods of producing hydrogen. The first is steam reformation of natural gas. This technique is the simplest and least expensive to achieve. It consists in recreating the reaction of methane with water. This reaction produces hydrogen and carbon dioxide. At first glance, the process seems really simple, but there's always a catch. The purpose of using hydrogen is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. You may have noticed that the reaction produced contains CO2. This is a gas that contributes to greenhouse gas effect, but there are processes to produce decarbonized hydrogen. It is a more ecological element. To do this, we capture the CO2 produced and store it to, for other uses. This leads us to another, more real problem. Natural gas is fossil energy. It is not unlimited. At some point, the world's reserves will run out. In addition, nearly 95% of the world's dihydrogen production is through natural gas. With current needs, natural gas could run out well before estimates. This leads us to look at the second method of hydrogen production. This method consists of extracting hydrogen from water. This is the electrosis reaction. You've probably already done this experiment in school. It consists of passing currents through the water. The extraction separates the water into hydrogen and oxygen. On paper, it seems simple and not polluting for the environment, but that's just the theory. For large-scale production, the situation is far from being the same. In fact, a huge amount of electricity is needed to produce hydrogen. This leads to a negative energy balance for this reaction. The loss can be as high as 60%. Well, that's not all. Most of today's electricity sources still come from fossil fuels. As you can see, this means producing hydrogen with a fairly high carbon footprint. To help you better understand the situation hydrogen is in, there's a few classifications to be aware of. You have gray hydrogen, which is obtained by fossil feedstocks. You also have blue hydrogen that can be obtained from fossil fuel sources, where their CO2 has been recovered. You also have yellow hydrogen produced by electrolysis under nuclear energy. And finally, there's a green hydrogen, which is obtained by electrolysis under renewable energy. It is the green one that allows to improve the energy efficiency of hydrogen. In the meantime, the last problem encountered is the storage of hydrogen. Here again, manufacturers face major challenges. Currently, hydrogen can be stored in two ways. The first is to compress it into 700 bars. The second is to liquefy it. Both methods are effective in allowing a better use of hydrogen, but the operation requires energy. This means that the densification of hydrogen is also very expensive. We're back to the cycle of reoccurring problems. Despite this, experts believe that hydrogen is a key element in the energy transition. But how do we get there? Before developing this topic, let's discover the different types of hydrogen in everyday life. The best use of hydrogen remains its contribution to the fuel cell. One of the applications of the fuel cell is the propulsion of electric cars, but it differs from vehicles using lithium ion batteries in one respect. The latter just uses the electrical energy stored in the battery. But, for the hydrogen car, the fuel cell produces electricity through the reactions of hydrogen and oxygen. In one respect, the hydrogen car is easier to use. All you have to do is fill the hydrogen tank and you can drive. It does not need to wait several hours at a charging station like an electric car. So what's the problem with the hydrogen car? Why doesn't it dominate the market yet? Well, electric cars are gaining more and more ground. In addition to the cost of producing hydrogen, storing it in the car is also a problem. The liquid state in which is stored poses risk of explosion. Drivers are not really safe compared to electric cars. Despite these problems, specialists are confident that the future success of hydrogen. For example, the company Hesada is trying to improve the performance of electrolyzers. The aim is to reduce hydrogen losses during production. It is said before that the loss can reach 60%. So whether you use fossil fuel energy or renewable energy, the result is the same. This loss of hydrogen must be regulated, and you have to analyze it from the electrolysis and storage fuel cell. From Hasada, she has found the cause of this loss. It is the bubbles that are created during the electrolysis reaction. 
These bubbles stick to the electrodes and reduce the efficiency of the electrolyzer. The Hasada company is not looking for a solution on the cheaper energy source. In fact, it is increasing the hydrogen yield. To do this, it uses a new technology. This is the polymer electrolyte membrane method from ORPEM. The goal is to continue the production of the hydrogen despite the absence of bubbles. For these, the PEM allows the cathodes to produce hydrogen gas. But that's not all. A SATA's caterpillar electrode has a reservoir at the bottom. This allows the electrolyte to stay away from the electrodes. Contact only occurs when it's drawn through the interior electrode separator. This approach allows gas production while keeping the bubbling environment away. Initially, tests have reached 98% efficiency. In comparison, a controversial electrode offers more lower efficiency, mitigating the 70-80%. With this new efficiency, the capacity is able to offset a large part of the energy costs. In this way, the hydrogen industry can finally take off. But this still does not solve the storage problems. If the safety issue is not resolved, drivers will not buy into hydrogen cars. Here again, researchers have set the bar quite high but they've been able to transform hydrogen into a solid state. This new form of hydrogen is easier to store and it is not likely to explode either. This could completely revolutionize the world of electric cars. Moreover, giants like Tesla are threatened by the hydrogen breakthrough, but these discoveries are still in the experimental stage. It'll be a few years before the revolution comes to your home. That gives other manufacturers time to choose the right path. Perhaps they'll change their minds when the research yields more concrete results. But in the meantime, electric cars still have a large share on the car market. They won't be losing their place anytime soon. Many manufacturers are currently working to improve the range and charging time of batteries. This makes an exciting rivalry between the two technologies, which is a good thing. Indeed, this competition could lead to an acceleration of research of hydrogen. But the benefactories are undoubtedly the users who will have more choice. But who knows, we'll probably also see a combination of the two technologies. The future will tell. Our video is already coming to an end, and we hope you enjoyed it. Do you really think hydrogen has a place in the world where Elon Musk rules? Leave your opinion in the comments. Do not forget to subscribe and click on that little blue thumb. Please enable notifications to stay up to date on the next videos, and we'll see you soon on ATAG.